Hello, I'm JW, and this time we're going to have a look at that uh, Sangamo Teleswitch again. And this time we're going to leave it powered up overnight and see if it does actually still work. As in, does it turn uh, one or both of the outputs on? And if it does, at uh, what time does that happen? Now, I've set it up here on the bench, so uh, let's have a closer look at that. So here's the meter on this uh, little stand here. We've got the mains power coming in from this uh, test block over here, so it's just basically line and neutral, just going in to power the thing. Now here's a closer look at the meter, and you see a little red LED is on at the bottom right there. That takes about 15 seconds to illuminate after power is applied. It's not entirely clear whether that is actually some kind of signal reception or indicator or whatever, but uh, nevertheless there's about a 15 second delay. There was a video of that put on Facebook the other day for anyone who wants to see that. Now I've actually wired up at the bottom these uh, neon indicators here. So I've got four of these. Uh, this one is for the 25 amp output. This is for the 80 amp output. And then we've got two here which are the switched neutral outputs which should switch at the same time as these two. So that would normally be for your hot water, the 80 amp one would be for the storage heaters, and then these two uh, neutral switch ones would be for the electricity meter to select the various different rates so you are obviously charged accordingly. So uh, if and when this thing turns on then uh, one or more of these indicators should illuminate. Now I can just demonstrate that on the 25 and the 80 ones, so we can just turn those on there. And you see they've just lit up uh, inside. Now of course we can't test these because those are internal, those other relays there, so uh, we'll have to just wait and see for those. So let's do again, uh, turn those off. Now obviously we're not going to stand here and record uh, 10 plus hours of video because that wouldn't uh, fit on the camera anyway. And also it'd be rather tedious to do that. So what we're going to have here is uh, this small camera here, which I'm uh, just going to set up on this uh, stand here. And uh, this will take one picture every 60 seconds, or basically once every minute. So I'll just leave this uh, set up here, and uh, then of course in the morning we can uh, have to have a look at all the pictures and see what happened, if anything. And uh, we will be powering this from an external main supply, because obviously the internal battery isn't going to last uh, 10 hours or however long it's going to be running for. So uh, that's going to be the uh, deal there. And of course we can then uh, say check that later on. And the view the camera gets is actually uh, this view in here. We'll see there, so that's basically the view we're going to get on the actual uh, pictures we're going to be taking. So we've got the meter there, and then of course the indicators which may or may not illuminate at the bottom. And uh, the only other thing I'm going to put here, I'm going to put a clock here so we can actually see what the time is. But obviously it'd be nice to know when then if this thing does actually switch on. So uh, let's get to that, and uh, the fact you're watching this video of course means that something did switch on. So let's just get and see uh, when it did actually do that. So this is the uh, time-lapse thing, and the uh, things counting up there are actually the minutes. So the seconds, of course, aren't moving because we're doing one frame every minute. So we're just going up to sort of quarter to 11 at night, and uh, as you can see, the lights are all still off. Now, uh, one of these uh, will turn on in a moment, and it'll be the leftmost orange one, and that actually represents the uh, 25 amp switching circuit, so we'll just wait for that one to switch on. So there we go, just turn on there at 23.11. Now the clock here is actually accurate, it's within a few seconds of the actual time, so 23.11 does seem a rather strange time to switch these things on, but nevertheless uh, that's what actually happens there. And you'll note that the two red ones are still off, so this is presumably just turning on your hot water, and that's going to be charged at the same rate as everything else because both of the rate changing ones on the red there are still off. So uh, this continues for a while and then we'll uh, just go forward a bit and then we'll see something else will switch on. So just coming to midnight here and uh, we should see just after the midnight that uh, all of the other three will switch on there. And so now we've got the hot water on which is the left orange one, the storage heaters which is the second orange one, and also got both of the red indicators on, which are the rate changing ones. So essentially all this power now is going to be used at the lower and cheaper rate. And that's kind of what you wanted because that's the whole point of this system in the first place for the householder, in that obviously it's just cheaper to use on this uh, particular system. So that's going to carry on for quite a while. So again we'll move forward a bit in time to uh, see what happens on the next switching event. So it's just after 1am here, and all of the lamps are still currently on, but if we have a look at the left-hand one in the uh, orange there, we should see that switch off in a moment. So 
So there we are, 20 past one in the morning. The hot water has for some reason been switched off, but the storage heaters, of course, continued on. And it's still on the cheap rate, as in, you can see from the red indicators, both still illuminated. Now again, moving forward in time a bit, just coming up to 3 a.m. And the next switching event is going to be just after 3. So there we saw the left indicator again, that's the hot water one, is now on. So now we've got uh, hot water and the heating all on. And uh, again, both of the rate change ones are still on and pretty much have been for the whole time. Now again, we jump forward uh, several hours here. Now it's 7 a.m., or just after 7 a.m., and the uh, hot water and heating has been on basically for the whole time. And uh, all that's going to happen now is that we're getting to the end of the cheap period, so all of the whole lot is going to basically switch off. And uh, there it goes, just at around 7.33. Now I did leave this running uh, basically for a whole 24 hour cycle but uh, nothing else happened during the day though, so this is not one of the settings where you've got the sort of afternoon boost for the hot water or anything. Basically it just goes and uh, stays off for the entire time so it is just an overnight thing but it does have that rather odd arrangement where the hot water comes on and off and uh, it appears to be independent of the heating selection and the hot water initially was certainly independent of the rate changes as well so uh, that's uh, pretty much it there. And say so this does run on a bit longer, but we'll uh, cut it off there because say uh, nothing else actually happens from this point onwards. So that's the uh, Sangamo radio teleswitch. This one is still working, and of course it is presumably going to be uh, operating on whatever settings it was set when it was installed in wherever it came from. Now the front of this one is marked South Scotland, so presumably it was used in that area. And as we saw in the uh, other video, it does have those uh, little switches inside which you can presumably use to configure it to respond to different signals. Unfortunately, we don't have any information on that, and even if we did, just changing those would simply mean it turns on and off at different times, so not really a great deal of point in going down that avenue. But uh, nevertheless, it does still seem to work, and uh, until next time, thanks for watching.